Well, I, I, I never ask students why they dropped out of school. It, it's, it, it doesn't make any difference to the class. The students, once they're here and they feel comfortable, when they feel safe in the environment and comfortable with, with me, sometimes they'll open up and they'll tell why it was they dropped out of school. Uh, many of them are here because they want to apply for a promotion. They want to apply at a particular place. And this happens about four times, up to four times in the course of a morning. We just pause, and particularly if I'm doing a, a group activity. We wait until the, the sound of the, of the locomotive goes by. What was then Shelby Junior High School and was a special education teacher, worked with students with uh, specific learning disabilities. Uh, in the 1980s, uh, I began teaching in the uh, adult education department at, at Pioneer. The coordinator's position came open, and that was a full-time position at Pioneer. So I was responsible for the, uh, the grant and coordinated the program in uh, northern Richland County and throughout Crawford County. Recruiting teachers, recruiting students, uh, and did that job until uh, 2009, at, at which point I retired from Pioneer. And then at the end of the, uh, the program year, doing the, the necessary reports, uh, the financial reports and, and uh, uh, statistical reports that the state uh, required. Uh, it wasn't just enough to get the grant and to say, well, we think we're doing good. We actually had to provide hard data that showed student progress, that a student might begin our program reading, we'll say, at uh, a seventh grade level, and then during the course of the year we would uh, uh, administer a, a follow-up test to that student and actually show whether the student had progressed or hadn't progressed. One thing that we do in GED prep is we adapt, we adapt, we adapt. Uh, I was telling students the other day in a math lesson that, you know, there's, there's a way that I use the building here at Helpline. We have four doorways into this building. Um, assuming that any one of them is open and it's during hours, it's legitimate to come in any one of those doors. You're still inside. Likewise with math, for example. There may be you know, one, two, three, four ways uh, to arrive at that correct answer in the math. And so when I have students who aren't, aren't comfortable or can't quite understand the traditional way of uh, doing long division, for example, I've got alternatives that I can use. And you know, if, if, if method one doesn't work, method two might work, method three, you know, hopefully one of those methods will, will get the point across to the student. But you know, this is, you know, the GED test is not the easy alternative for kids that are having problems in school. It really is not. That's good to know. It's, it's easy to think that people who don't have a high school diploma uh, may have been slackers or troublemakers or goof-offs in school and that the, the, the school district just easily decided to rid itself of, of those students. But there are many other reasons why people drop out of school and, and many of them are non-educational issues. Uh, I remember one student I had when I taught the class in Plymouth, she said that by the time she was in sixth grade her family had moved something like 30 times. And she said, I told my parents that if, that if we move again, I'm not going back to school. And she said, well, we did and I didn't. A, a smart woman, presented herself well, well-dressed, but simply a woman who, who did not have the, her paper. There was one day when he was a, a senior in high school, and he said, my daddy didn't come home. And I was the oldest boy, so I had to drop out of school to take care of my mama and my younger brothers and sisters. Another situation very similar, a woman who said, my mama got cancer. And I remember both these people, they talked about their daddy and their mama. And this woman said, my mama got cancer. I was the oldest girl. I had to stay home and take care of her and my younger brothers and sisters. Again. She had no plans to drop out of school. I have no reason to think that she was nothing but a good student, diligent, but life threw itself at her in such a way that she had no choice in, in, at that time. What motivated you in the direction of education? The family biz, and so to speak, you know, like, like any other people go into a particular line of work. You know. um, well, it, it's rewarding at Helpline because um, 
in, in many ways I'm my own boss. It's, it's very pure teaching. You know, we get here and we get right into, into the business at hand and that's, uh, and that's learning.